of institution. All of participants are expected to mute the audio and only unmute the video during the event. We cordially invite you to take your own firm and comfort seat in your own room and please avoid the backlight. Make sure that you have a good and stable internet connection. If you have an earphone or headset, we recommend you to use it so that your voice can clearly and loudly to be heard. During the Q&A discussion session, all participants, please use the chat box to deliver the questions. Thank you for your cooperation and consideration. The center is set up among Taiwan Tech, ITS, and Media Mandala Catholic University to survive. The main goal of the center is to strengthen cooperation on science and technology between Indonesia and Taiwan, and we will focus on recycle and use of industrial waste. Targeted compounds include copper ash, burn slag, and spent bleaching oil that are of significant amount and to our common interest. We will also involve 1,400 strong alumni in Indonesia, and we will engage private sectors, NPOs, and research institutes. Through this international collaboration, Institute Technology is full of November called Strengthen the Collaboration between National Taiwan University of Science and Technology, Vidya Mandala Catholic University, and Indonesian Institute of Science. This research center was developed as a platform to connect the researcher from different universities, from ITS, Vidya Mandala, LIPI, and MTUST, with the expert from industry that work together to help the research regarding to the eco-green solution and for the circular economy and sustainability. Waste utilization is a one of the implementation of eco-green solution. And we are now that Indonesia could be develop this model to recover of the waste and use as a many different purpose. And also we can develop a good impact to the environment and also to the society. We are proud that IPS, the Institute of Technology 10 November, Surabaya, Indonesia, has been a part of this prestigious international collaboration. The topic of a circular economy and green innovative resource matches with the IPS vision and the world focus. So I believe that the research center opens opportunities for researchers to expand the outcome, the connection, and also the international collaboration. In addition, it boosts the ITS contributions to the nation. Besides a medium to the international research collaboration, this research center wants to provide a database expert from Indonesia and Taiwan so they can find a sparing partner to work together for international research collaboration. By this research center, we do hope that the spirit of doing research and innovation for Indonesian academia 
can grow and we can have a broader link for collaboration in international scale. And when a new researcher come up, we can use this platform to build collaboration for their research and also support their career. It is a great pleasure that scientists and engineers from Indonesia has a place to work together to build a collaboration with other countries, especially Taiwan. This is a proof that Indonesian researchers can work together and compete with others in the world-class research. Lembaga Ilmu Pengetahuan Indonesia, or we call LIPI, support the research center, and together we can solve industrial problems, especially for waste treatment and reuse. Through Taiwan Indonesia Research Center, we can build triple helix research by connecting government, university, and industry. As a rector of Vidya Mandala Surabaya Catholic University, it is my great honor to be part of Taiwan Indonesia Research Center to promote international collaboration in order to develop the innovative ideas from Indonesian academia for Indonesia circular economy. Indonesia needs intensive construction as a modern and a developed country. And we are now that the source of waste, especially from industrial waste, is abundant in Indonesia. We can use this waste for utilization and also this is a small step that we can use as an eco-green solution. For example, we have produced a lot of food sludge that can be used as a cement additive and also for construction. We also produce a lot of stem bleaching up that can be used for cement making and also for the absorbent. We already structured STIC roadmap based on our goal, which is circular economy and green innovative resource. In the first year, we established a platform for the collaboration of industry, academia, government administrator. And it followed by a data bank of experts to support potential collaboration and capacity building in the second year. And in the third year, we focused on expanding this collaboration as well as capacity building through seminar, workshop, and exhibition. Stick Cycle also cooperate with Minister of Science and Technology Taiwan and Taipei Economic and Trade Office as Taiwan representative in Indonesia who fully support this center. The Science and Technology Innovation Center raised two main issues, namely circular economy and green innovative resource. The goal of this center is to strengthen the cooperation on science and technology in line with new southbound policy of Taiwan government. Be better together. Together, be green. Thank you. Welcome to the policy and implementation of Circular Economy Challenges and Opportunity 2021 Virtual International Seminar in conjunction with the virtual opening ceremony of Taiwan Indonesia. Okay, good morning, everyone. Okay, we will start our webinar today. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning to so all of the participants. My name is Warma Dewanti, and I will be the master of ceremony of, of this event. And the Honorable Director of Widya Mandala Catholic University, there is uh, Kuncoro Po. GDIP SA PhD. Selamat pagi Pak Rektor. Masih di perjalanan saya kira ini. Selamat pagi, selamat pagi. Ya, terima kasih. <laughs> terima kasih kehadirannya pada pagi hari ini Pak Rektor. Terima kasih sama-sama semuanya. And also the selamat honorable pagi seluruh peserta. Selamat pagi Pak Rektor. And honorable Professor Ji Si Liu, the director of Science and Technology Innovative Center for Circular Economy and Green Innovation Resources, and also the Vice President of the National Taiwan University of Science and Technology. Good morning, Professor Chao An. Yeah, good morning, Selamat okay, pagi. Nice <laughs> to meet you all, thank you. Nice to meet you again, Professor. Mm -hmm. And also, 
the Honorable of Distinguished Professor Huang Cholung. Professor Huang, good morning. Yeah, good morning. <laughs> nice to meet you again. <laughs> and I think this is a lot of alumni from uh, construction engineering is also come to this event, Professor Huang. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. And we have the general manager, uh, Amos Chang. Uh, good morning, everybody. Ah, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Amos Chang. And uh, General Manager Amos Chang is from uh, Chung Tai Resource Technology Corporation. Thank you very much for coming today. And also we have Ibu Dr. Eng Januarti Jaya Eka Putri. Ibu Dr. Januarti, selamat pagi. Ibu Januarti is from Civil Engineering of ITS. And also we have Ibu Felicia in here and Dr. Jenny, Dr. Dian, and all of the participants today. Uh, we will start our webinar. Uh, before we start it, I would like to introduce uh, a little bit about our research center as already mentioned uh, previously by the video. And this webinar today uh, has a uh, themes of recovery, recovery and recycling of waste from industry. And the webinar conducted under Science and Technology Innovative Center for Circular Economy and Green Innovation Resources. This is the collaboration between the National Taiwan University of Science and Technology with the Widya Mandala Catholic University and also with the Research Center of Infrastructure and Sustainable Environment of the RPM of Institute Technology 10 November. And on this event, our agenda today the first one is opening. We already have the opening in this morning and then continue by the speech from Professor G.C. Liu as the Director of Science and Technology Innovation Center for Circular Economy and Green Innovative Resources. And the third one is welcoming speech and opening from the Rector of Vidya Mandala Catholic University. And then we are continue by the main agenda, the explanation of each topic by each of distinguished professor and also honorable speakers. So without overdue, I would like to invite Professor G. C. Liu to have some speech in this uh, webinar event. So Professor Liu, the time is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, dear Wawa. Again, uh, good morning, uh, An. Greetings from Taipei. Uh, we are really honored uh, to have distinguished speakers, uh, two from Taiwan, and one from uh, Indonesia. We are very happy to have Professor Emeritus, uh, Professor Huang Zhaolong, a highly distinguished expert and scholar on resource recovery, uh, particularly when applied and reused it for construction purpose. We are also very honored to have General Manager, Mr. Zhang, okay, uh, who represents Zhongtai Resource Corporation, which is a model uh, corporate uh, in Taiwan, uh, known for uh, circular economy. And also we are happy to meet and uh, have the opportunity to have uh, Ibu Januati to share her uh, precious experience with us. I hope everyone uh, happy and uh, this uh, webinar a very fruitful and successful one. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Liu. Yeah, and then for the second speech, we would like to invite uh, Rector of Vidya Mandala Catholic University, Dr. S. Kuncorofiu, Deep SAN, uh, Diploma SAN PhD, to give the welcome remarks and also opening this uh, webinar today. So, Pak Kuncorofiu, the time is yours, Pak Rector. Thank you very much for the MC. Uh, our distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, especially Professor Liu, as the director <clears throat> of the STIC. First of all, uh, I'd like to congratulate all uh, the team of the STIC CEGIR, uh, Taiwan Tech, ITS, for the fruitful collaboration in establishing the very meaningful and I think uh, 
the very important center to respond the challenges faced by every single individual on this earth nowadays. So that's about the global warming, about the uh, waste. Uh, therefore, uh, this workshop entitled the recovery and recycling waste from industry as the main vision and mission of uh, the establishment of the center, I think is very critical. As this workshop is expected to become a medium for transferring technology and knowledge regarding recovery of light ash and bottom ash produced from Taiwan industries and technologies to recovering and recycling industrial waste in Taiwan. Therefore, on behalf of all the participants, I'd like to express our sincere gratitude and highest appreciation to all the distinguished speakers uh, in this morning, uh, as mentioned by uh, Professor Liu, uh, that is Dr. Eng Januarti Jaya Ekaputri, Professor Emeritus Huang Chaolung, and also the um, uh, Mr. Amos Chang, General Manager of Chung Tai Resource Technology Corporation. And of course, to all participants who have joined uh, this workshop, I do appreciate all your attendance in this uh, very important workshop as this demonstrates the very highly responsible uh, manner for all of us to do our best in managing the waste surrounding us. And of course, uh, the good practice uh, phase uh, or has, has been responded and researched by the Taiwan experts and also Indonesian expert will be beneficial for all of us. And finally, I'd like to invite all of you to continuously collaborate, cooperate, because together we can do everything. And that's, I think, the main message of the establishment of the STIC, that the Taiwan uh, government has invited all the neighboring countries, especially in Asia Pacific region, to respond to the global issues. Therefore, I'd like to congratulate Professor Liu and also all the support donators and also, of course, the Taiwan government for this kind of uh, initiative. So on behalf of all the participants to, uh, and also the Professor Liu as the director of the SDIC and all distinguished uh, speakers, I <clears throat> formally remark the opening of this workshop uh, today, organized by the SDIC CEGIR. I wish all of you the best and can attend this very important workshop from the beginning till the, till the end. So we can also the take home message upon the completion of this workshop, we can do something better in the future. Together we can do better and make this earth and our place a better place to live. May God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pak Rector. Thank you for the opening remarks today. Uh, and uh, we really hope that this webinar also can be uh, successful and uh, come up with a good uh, discussion. Thank you very much, uh, Pak Rector. Thank you, pleasure. Yeah. So before we start our uh, main agenda, uh, I would like to mention to all of the participants, we are have the interpretation in here. So if you check your Zoom uh, meeting, you can see in the bottom part, they will be show the interpretation. If you choose uh, in English, so uh, you will be here this uh, webinar in the original one. But then if you choose Bahasa, so you will be, uh, or uh, Indonesian, you will be here the Indonesian language. 
And later on, we will also have uh, the Chinese one or the Mandarin ones, then it will be uh, translated in uh, Bahasa. So, uh, Bapak dan Ibu sekalian, untuk kesempatan uh, pagi hari ini, uh, Bapak dan Ibu bisa melihat di Zoom meetingnya itu ada interpretasi atau interpreter. Karena kegiatan ini akan menggunakan bahasa Inggris, interpretasinya ada di dalam bahasa. Apakah sudah bisa terlihat Bapak dan Ibu sekalian? Jika Bapak dan Ibu ingin mendengarkan dalam uh, original atau dalam bahasa Inggris, maka bisa memilih original audio. Sedangkan jika Bapak dan Ibu ingin memilih di dalam bahasa Indonesia, silahkan memilih dalam bahasa Indonesia dan nantinya kita juga akan ada terjemahan dari bahasa Mandarin ke bahasa Indonesia. Semoga sudah bisa terlihat partisipan hari ini ada kurang lebih 100 partisipan. So, we come up with the main agenda and I would like to invite the moderator for this session. Professor uh, Felicia Buveli, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Buwawa. Yeah, okay. So Buveli will be the moderator for Ibu Januarti Jaya Eka Putri and also Professor Huang Cholung. So the time is yours, Buveli. Thank you, Buwawa. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished professors. Morning. Uh, it's nice to be here, even though we are in the webinar and we do hope soon we can meet each other in person. So before we start, uh, the first session is uh, uh, Dr. Can we go? Okay, thank you. Dr. Eng Januarti Jaya Eka Putra. Uh, she is the lecturer in ITS uh, and also have a background of education in civil engineering from ITP and then doctor degree from the University of Tokyo, Japan. Uh, she has uh, many awards. Uh, such as uh, the first one, the first prize of Mining and Mineral Industry Institute Research Award Competition 2019, and also Silver Medal from National Research Council of Thailand in 2020. She's a very productive uh, lecturer and researcher, and we are honored today to have her to share her ex expertise uh, for introduction. And then after her, we go to the second presentation is uh, Professor Huang Chaolong. I will introduce him later. So the first uh, presentation, I give the time to Bu Chanwati. The time is yours, Bu Chanwati. Thank you very much, Bu Feli. Good morning, everyone. Um, morning. Yeah, it is a very uh, nice day to start this uh, today with a very good meeting. And uh, it is my great pleasure to meet again Professor Liu and also Professor Wang. And yeah, we have, uh, I think I have a good friend uh, from Chungtai, yeah, Mr. Amos Chang. Um, I think it's like a double, yeah, like a, yeah, in, uh, is that okay, Bufeli? I, I listen some, uh, interpret, yeah, interpreter saying something, Sh should I just, uh, I think you, you can ignore it, uh, oh, okay. it. let, let uh, the interpreter interpret you so you can, uh, present just like <laughs> yeah, okay? Go there. <laughs> okay, okay, and it is uh, coincidentally uh, very happy to uh, see uh, Pak Kuncoro here, <laughs> and I think I should report to Bu Warma. Yeah, Bu Warma, uh, last time I mentioned about our proposal, uh, and we meet, uh, we met a very uh, good. Uh, you know, like uh, reviewers, and, oh. and one of the reviewer is Pak Kun. So oh. thank you very much, Pak Kun, for yeah, helping I us. Yeah, I think I'm impressed with your matching fund proposal, <laughs> Professor Liu. Yeah. Yes, it's very good, you know. So her dream to uh, to make a good research on research uh, on waste is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> I have to give credit to yeah. her. 
Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you, you, give, you give us so a very good mark. So, <laughs> yeah, this yeah, reunion hope... for two weeks ago. <laughs> yes, uh, thank Four you. Four Points yeah. Hotel, Surabaya. <laughs> yeah, you know, like a Professor Liu uh, at that moment, I didn't know who is he. I didn't know that he is a famous person from Mandala University. I'm so sorry. I just <laughs> no, asked him, no like, uh, who are you, sir? <laughs> OK, <laughs> no, your name is uh, Kunchora. And then <laughs> where is your university? <laughs> it's kind of like, a, you know, very rude, uh, very rude greetings. But yeah. yeah. Uh, so what I a think... small word, you know? <laughs> yes, OK. Yeah, uh, I, yeah I should start my presentations. Uh, I will share my uh, bio. Okay. Is that visible now? Yes, we can see it. Uh, maybe the slideshow. Yes. Okay, that's, that's great. Okay. And yeah, this is, uh, we have a, a FABA application. We call it, a, a, we call it FABA, Flyers and Batamas application for Indonesian Green Belt. Uh, this means that um, uh, we need to protect our coastline uh, our beach here, yeah, our infrastructure in the coastline uh, by using uh, FABA, uh, FABA utilization, FABA or collage. And let me share you my experience uh, during my uh, maybe more than 20 years on uh, concrete durability research. And uh, this accident happens in Amurang Beach uh, in North Sulawesi. And it occurs because of the abrasions. Okay, I will play the video. Just very recent, yeah, June 15. So you can see here, there is no protections. There is no breakwater. And all buildings here collapse because of the abrasions. Yes. It's a very sad because it was sent by my friend uh, who is living uh, there. So yeah, this is also scary. If we cannot do anything with that, what happened to the next? Yeah, and also the abrasion is very severe, but some parts can be, yeah, can be safe because of uh, very limited, uh, very limited, uh, what say, limited protections, very limited, and it is still okay. And next, and next, this video can, uh, yeah, we can see here a house, collapse. Yeah, the, the sound here is off because uh, there are too, yeah, too many people scream. <laughs> so I made it off. And we can see here is the Amurang Bridge. Oh. Where is the protection? What happened there? The bridge was built without any protection from the sea. So it's uh, unbelievable. And another one, yeah, just go on like that. And what should we do? Yeah, then this is the one that uh, we are concerned uh, in, 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 in the world. Not only in Indonesia, but also in the world. We know that mangrove is the bad protector for our coastline. And the, the situations of mangrove in Indonesia in a very bad condition. And uh, we know that also mangrove is a mainstay of CO2 capturing. We have to rely on the mangrove because, because it's a very important forest and the problem here, how to plant the mangrove saplings is not in the correct way. They use PVC pipes to protect the mangrove saplings from the waves. 
Ian eat failure like this. Yeah. Ian all the saplings was uh, washed away uh, by the current wave, and uh, we can see again and again they try to plan and fail, plan again and fail. It is uh, we, we yeah we lost a lot of energy because of that because of that. And this is from the uh, Ministry of Environment uh, collaborate with the Ministry of um, uh, yeah, another ministry uh, who, who has the responsible for revitalization and rehabilitation. Uh, how the uh, condition of the mangrove in a very critical conditions. We have to maintain and planting and to educate the people also for mangrove, uh, uh, which are in the good conditions. We have to protect and utilize in balance. Yeah, and this is the conditions of mangrove very near to our campus in Wonorejo. We can see here the failure, many failures of mangrove planting in East Coastal area of Surabaya City. Why? Because we don't have any, uh, I don't know how to say, good education or good management of uh, uh, planting system. And from the uh, right side, we can see a group of bamboo fences uh, in Thailand. Uh, it is a project uh, uh, with, uh, I think, Yokohama National University because uh, Professor Suzuki is my friend uh, who is uh, doing uh, research in uh, Thailand on mangrove. And they put layers of uh, bamboo fences there with a very special shape there. You can see a triangular shape. And you can see some layers of the bamboo fences to protect the uh, mangrove uh, saplings uh, very far away from, uh, from these uh, uh, fences. And here again, uh, this is uh, the view of the Wonorejo Mangrove Eco Park. Uh, we took it maybe uh, two years ago and we, and we went there and actually our target is to make it uh, a big thicker, at least uh, 250 meter forward to the seaside. And uh, the condition is not uh, good also. Yeah, this is just a uh, uh, video from the drone two years ago. Yeah, this is, uh, we can go there. I think maybe Professor Liu uh, can go there to see and to enjoy the scenery, uh, the Wonorejo, very near to uh, ITS. And this is our idea, how to combine the mangrove as the live uh, breakwater and with concrete blocks as the breakwater, as a structure to protect both to protect the saplings and to protect the coastline. And this is the, the idea. And we can use fly ash and bottom ash, both of them to make a breakwater, make a good structure uh, and durable structure, durable concrete to protect our coastline. <laughs> and we've made a simulation here, uh, the eastward current, very near to Surabaya. And this is the, uh, uh, this is the uh, north uh, side. And uh, in the simulations, we put a very small barrier here, a breakwater. And uh, you can see this is the, uh, yeah, the current velocity. The current velocity, the red means a zero. There is no current velocity. So by putting or by building, uh, by build the uh, build, uh, uh, how, uh, by constructing constructing a very small breakwater here, uh, we can see here the the, the current uh, from very very high current can be reduced to uh, zero. So this is uh, the idea to put some breakwaters uh, by using fly ash and bottom ash to protect uh, Surabaya. Uh, from the, yeah, from the uh, abrasions. And this is uh, our research and our recent applications uh, at ITS. As you can see here, uh, making concrete is very simple. You just mix all cement, sand, gravel, and water. What is the difficult things to make a concrete? Everybody can make a concrete. But the problem here, 
when we uh, utilize fly ash, when we put bottom ash to the concrete, the properties change. And the mechanical strength also changes. But the durability, we know the durability increase. Here, there are three methods, three, uh, three methods to make uh, uh, concrete by using uh, fly ash and bottom ash here. As a cement replacement, usually we use uh, fly ash as maximum of 30% uh, to replace cement. And we use also bottom ash to replace sand. And we use, yeah, you know, we use also uh, gravels and water. And the second method, if the quality of fly ash is very good, then we can replace the man at maximum of 80%. So this is very good because, because the, yeah, the price reduced also. Yeah, the, we can reduce the price, we can have a cheaper concrete, but here maybe the mechanical strength also reduces. Here we put microbes, we use bacteria, we use fungi to make a calcite precipitations in the concrete to make our concrete becomes denser and to increase the mechanical property of the concrete, to increase its tensile and to increase its compressive strength. This is the one that uh, uh, we, uh, we are doing the research and uh, Warma here is uh, one of our experts in our group. And the last one, the very famous one is geopolymer. We don't need any cement for land. We just use fly as 100% to replace cement. And we use also bathmas to replace sand and we use gravels as usual, but we replace water with alkali artifacts. And uh, talking about the uh, difference between the geopolymer and conventional concrete here, we use fly as 100% to replace cement, and we use uh, alkali, uh, usually we use natrium or sodium to replace water. And as usual, we can combine uh, bottom mass and sand together with gravels to make a concrete. And the appearance is the same. The workability also is the same. The mechanical properties also the same, but Talking about durability, geopolymer is a super material. So it can resist uh, acid. It can also resist the chloride penetrations. It can resist blasting load. And also it can resist the uh, uh, fire. So we can use this kind of material for fire protections. And uh, this is one of the pictures uh, we took from Tanjung Balai Karimun, uh, one of the island uh, very near to uh, Riau Island. And we can see here that these uh, piles uh, have a lot of uh, corrosion. Uh, we can also uh, capture here a lot of barnacles. We call it biofouling. It's a very uh, common uh, yeah, phenomenon. In the, in the beach and also in the coastal line. And uh, corrosion will occur not only because of the chloride ion, but also the attack of the uh, barnacles. So what should, uh, what should we do with this uh, structure? And uh, we know that the fly ash and bottom ash has a lot of benefits for structures, especially to increase its durability. Uh, especially if we use geopolymer 100% to replace cement Portland with fly ash, it can enhance structure durability. And this picture was taken in one of the uh, locations of uh, piles in Suramadu Bridge uh, at Madura Strait, East Java. You can see also here a lot of uh, barnacles or biofouling attached to the uh, piles. 
and we put our space cement, it's very near here, we put our space cement, our concrete, geopolymer concrete. Uh, of course, this pile was made from conventional concrete, but we put our geopolymer uh, space cement very near to the piles. And this is the locations, uh, and ITS is around here, ITS is around here. And here is the result. This is the maximum chloride ion, free chloride ion, uh, yeah, standard by the, uh, yeah, you, we have an Indonesian national standard uh, to control the, uh, how much uh, free chloride ion uh, can be found in the uh, concrete. And this is the maximum. When we put the normal concrete here, uh, in the immersions, in the, uh, in the sea, or water, for at least like, uh, you know, here like um, four months. Uh, chloride ion in normal concrete increased dramatically. And this point is just like a 7.5 centimeter in the depth of the concrete. So it means that the uh, free chloride ion can go and penetrate into the normal concrete. And it can initiate the corrosions if we put a rebar or reinforce uh, inside the concrete. And what happened if we use geopolymer and we put it in the seawater? It's very interesting here, we mix geopolymer not with the, uh, only, uh, not with the uh, water to make the alkali, but we use seawater to simulate that uh, how severe the conditions if we don't have any uh, you know, top water or clean water, we, we, ju we just uh, use the seawater to mix the concrete. And this is the way we made our geopolymer, our first specimen. And we can see here, it can entrap or immobilize the fluoride, uh, uh, sorry, the chloride ion inside the matrix of the geopolymer. And for the second uh, specimens here, uh, we made our uh, geopolymer, we case, uh, we case our uh, geopolymer and one day after casting, we put it directly into the uh, seawater. And what happened here, again, the geopolymer can immobilize the uh, free chloride ion uh, very good, yeah? So this is the, very much difference uh, the durability of the uh, from the uh, normal concrete how difference the normal concrete uh, from the geopolymer all right then i come up with the conclusions because the, uh, i was given a very limited time and uh, as we can see here for the green belt of indonesian coastline actually fly ash and bottom ash has, uh, has contributed to many areas. It has a lot of benefits for our infrastructures in coastal uh, area. And both fly ash and bad mass can be used as a potential material to against, to immobilize the chloride ion to protect our structure from uh, corrosions. And again, mangrove as a barrier, uh, life barrier can be combined with concrete blocks as a breakwater for uh, coastal protection. No. Okay, so Thank yeah, this is the uh, okay. <laughs> uh, Thank yeah, you. The end of my presentations, and yeah, we shall go back to Bufel. Okay, thank you, Bu uh, Januati, for the nice presentation, and uh, it's quite a terrifying video when the house is just collapsed by itself. I think we need a uh, really concern about environment and how the things, uh, safety and uh, protection, is really very important. So actually, we have question here, but uh, can we hold this one until we finish the presentation from Professor Huang Chaolong? Uh, so I will keep the uh, question later, and then 
uh, we can discuss after Professor Huang presentation. Okay. So we move to the next uh, presentation. Please uh, show the slide uh, for introduction of Professor Huang. Oh, or let me introduce uh, Professor Huang Chaolong is an emeritus professor in Taiwan Tech. So he has a background education from the University of Illinois, the USA. And he has a very excellent experience in uh, his uh, expertise. And we are very honored today to have him to share his experience with us. Uh, and the audience can later asking about uh, related uh, topic experience to him. And I believe that he very welcome to discuss based on his expertise. So I, without further ado, I give the time to Professor Huang. Please, uh, your time for presentation. Okay, thank you, thank you <laughs> Chair. And uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, it's morning. my great pleasure to share, although I retired, but I, I'm so great to share the past experience on my uh, work on fry ash and button ash. I hope that can help for this uh, workshop, okay? Can I see the slides? Okay, uh, the topic of this one is uh, the utilization of uh, fry ash and button ash for concrete product in Taiwan. And uh, since uh, the content actually first I'm talking about the birth of fry ash and button ash, the DNA of fry ash and button ash. How many of yin yang, that's a Chinese yin yang, okay, to stimulate the bonding fuse and the kaleidoscopic building application that you saw uh, in Taiwan, many uh, structure and application of low work for energy saving and carbon reduction. And now we're talking about ESG function of fry ash and button ash. And also talking about feature application of fry ash and button ash, talking about zero carbon emission application. And finally is a conclusion and documentation. Can I have a next please? Oh, okay. Okay, as long as a uh, uh, heat power plant use a coal production, they will have a, uh, uh, fresh production. So in the, during power plant uh, doing, okay, we call burn it boiler and the heavier one to the ash pond in Taiwan, okay? And the, for, for the light one flew with the heat flow. So EP, uh, electric precipitation uh, to catch the fish uh, light part we call fresh or pop rice, whole ash. And that to, in Taiwan actually put in the ash bin. So that it delivery, uh, direct delivery as a utilization. And those dust, clean towels and fuel, okay, uh, gypsum. And they will produce gypsum that you already use very well in Taiwan. So as long as coal heat pop brand, they will have ash. And so that is the burst. Anyway, in uh, Indonesia, I know that uh, there's a lot of uh, power use uh, coal heating power. So that's, uh, we have a lot of uh, ash. Next. Okay, I went. Okay, next. Okay. The DNA, actually look at the DNA is very important and uh, very useful because uh, the DNA of a calcium clay, actually the fresh or button edge is a calcium clay. So, but this edge actually is a uh, impurity in coal. So that's material iron sulfide and clay and quartz. And so this one under high temperature, become very active. So no wonder in the world, it's been used widely to as a porcelain material. It's kind of a supplementary cementation material. By looking at this one, you see 
the replacement, but it's actually is not only to replace cement. It can be as like a geopolymer that will be very useful material. Okay, so that's uh, usually the DNA of that one is a person that being used long time ago, more than 2000 years ago. Right, next, yeah. But looking at the, the shape, physical shape, you will see that uh, flesh, just like a bead, different size. Actually, it's different size of gradation. So that's, so that's very important. Why fresh this shape can aid it, the workability of concrete? Because the concrete is not only produced uh, a concrete set, but we need the workability for the construction people. So this shape actually very good for workability because uh, it's like a bare for bearing can make concrete easy contract. So you can reduce water as long as reduce some superparticide for use in making high form concrete. Okay, next. Next please. Okay, okay. So this was the, this was some Burn because if we grind, not ground the core too very fine, so they have uh, some monastical particle that will become an unburned carbon in fresh. This unburned carbon actually can influence workability. So normally for the fresh, we use a grind method to grind the particle and release the small particle out. So that's, this small particle is very active just like a silica film. Next. So you look at the size is a time mi 10 micron here. The size can be 30 micron down to one or two micron. Even those, some particles are very, very small. So the fry edge actually, the small particle can be used as a fire resistant material. So in Taiwan, actually it's been used uh, for some of this one can use for high insulation materials. And those uh, particles in the big spherical bowl, actually they contain, contain a large different size of fried particle. And this one, after you grind it, actually can release a lot of very useful uh, part, uh, fried particle. So that's what aided and then reduce more cement as the required. Next. By looking at the chemical composition of fresh, compared with a cement, potent cement, actually class F fresh contain less CaO, or calcium oxide, and class C fresh contain large CaO. So this class CF is more reactive, but that were a little bit harmful to the durability. As compared with uh, cement, it's uh, can, uh, about the 62% of uh, uh, calcium oxide. So that's a highly alkaline material. And the fresh actually is highly acidic material. Okay, so that can be reduced or fuel the concrete. But in Taiwan, we use a different method I will mention later. Okay, next please. So looking at the tertiary diagram, SiO2, Al2O3, and the CaO, you will see that the relationship of class F fresh, class C fresh, slag in Indonesia, also a lot of uh, brass furnace slag, that's also very useful. And cement here, and silica film here. Silica film here, uh, usually, for those uh, very, very ultra high strength concrete, we usually need uh, silica film. But if you use a class F fresh, also you can have the similar result. And look at the, the appearance of this one. Uh, silica film is very small, one hundred one of the cement particle. And look at the microscope by SEM and TEM. Uh, SEM, silica film here, 
fries here and the snack here. Next, please. And look at the x-ray pattern. Each, the class CF, uh, C fries, actually, they have a diffusion band in this about 30 to 34. And the class F fries is a diffusion band about 21 to 25. And majorly composition is for class F fries because contain large amount of the SiO2 and the AO2 3 So it's a moonlight and some quartz. Next, please. So looking at the particle size, fresh actually small particle. So they have a very good gradation. By looking at this one, they can be used uh, to replace cement or replace some uh, sand also. And look at the bottom edge, the particle size is large. And this one can replace part of sand. Next, please. So how many of yin yang? And uh, so that uh, this one is the fresh as a porcelain material should be split by alkali, by external alkali or sodium uh, silicate or some other material to stimulate the reaction. So that the, this kind of ash can be very useful. Next, please. So why this material are useful and uh, is durable? Because uh, looking on the carousel or pinamid, pinamid and carousel actually, they contain a lot of uh, volcanic ash with lime. They can uh, build the carousel in long periods, more than 2,300 years before. And nowadays, fresh, just like Volcanic ash. If we stipulate by alkaline material, they can produce very long, uh, durable material. So the antique master, we use an antique master to do this way. And the <clears throat> fries also can be used for uh, like a pigment. They use a geopanama. So we use uh, the fries butter ash by adding uh, sodium silicate, uh, sodium hydroxide, then can super reaction, just like a gray wall, it's more than thousand years. And they use a uh, lime, rice as ash, and lime pudding, and then can make the concrete long lasting. So we cannot say, okay, we can produce concrete uh, last durable, but if you don't use a recipe, you don't use the DNA of the concrete on the long period of pyramid. You cannot produce durable concrete because some modern concrete only age about 50 years, then it's a problem. Okay, next please. So in Taiwan, in order to make this concrete uh, fresh, very useful. So we use a fresh, not by replacement, no, we don't replace cement because cement is cement. But what we are doing is fill the pole of sand because of the particle size. We can fill the small walls. And by looking at the physical gray uh, particle size distribution, we know that this material actually have a gradation. So you put it into the wall, they can fill the wall so they can stop any penetration of water. And that is uh, from physical porphyrin effect. By looking at chemical on the left-hand side, chemical effect, because uh, uh, fresh or button ash by adding calcium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, and the cement calcium hydroxide, for adding some water to add the reaction, so they can form, uh, can form a lot of uh, gel and crystal. So that's the reason concrete can be lasting longer because uh, the reaction. So what we are doing, next please. What we are doing in Taiwan, I derived the system. I think there are many Indonesia, my student or Venan student, I instruct them how to do this one. We use a feeding method, big field, 
or forward feeding. So we decide the property of the material and we measure the maximum unit density. So we put a flash into sand and to measure the heavier, the dense, dense the one, so they can physically dense. So the system become very, very uh, uh, strong, okay, strong. Now we find that this void. And then we decide what kind of property we want. You want a durable concrete, you want the uh, anti corrosion concrete, or you want the ultra high concrete with design strength. So we then we use SP to aid workability. So make the concrete flow without segregation. So we have a very good durable concrete. So you there on the top uh, right, uh, right top, you will see Saskon. Actually, what we I'm doing in year 2012 to year 2020, I engage in a European community project doing this one. And also this method can be used for uh, alkali active concrete. So we use a geopolymer method. Next, please. So concrete become user-friendly without fresh. If only use a cement, it's become very steep. And the super precisor where loss is mighty power in 60 of 90 minutes. But with the fresh, the concrete can last two hours to three hours, still flowing. So conventional concrete is very steep. And then we can design the concrete slump from zero to 2000, uh, 270 millimeter slump, just as what we design. So you can design the desired flowing concrete with uh, fries or buttons. Next, please. Well, I say kaleidoscope because the fries can or buttons can be used many, many ways. You can imagine how this material, because you, when you imagine that uh, in ancient period, okay, in Egypt, Egypt, in Rome period, those buildings, they use a volcanic ash, this ash is similar. So that can make any kind, as long as you can think, you can do it. So the following, next one, please, is the project I did many, I think I did from 1983 to, to 2020, okay? So the real practice is a core ash in Taiwan since 1983, the skyscraper. This is the first project. I emerge uh, the cement with fresh because the people are worried about use fresh, the strength will be low. Uh, so I try to prove and give them evidence so that engage in this project. The project is 60, 56 MPA design, concrete for 85 strong. It's a high strength, high performance concrete. In year two, uh, 1994. So in Taipei 101, year 2000, the strength is a seven MPA. So that you, if you uh, visit Taipei, you will see the high rise building, the tallest building in Taipei city. Okay, that is uh, Taipei 101. And marine corrosion resistant structure, that is anti corrosion. Fresh is very unique and very magic material. Can consume calcium hydroxide from cement. That is a way cause corrosion because the water, they contain some sulfate. They will cause, uh, and the cement, they will uh, they generate entering that. So that will expand and cause pollution. But what I'm doing is use the similar method from Kaohsiung 85 story to use a, that concrete only 35 for marine concrete. So Pindong Museum of Marine Biology and Aquarium. So I designed this one from pile, from building and to the roof, all use this kind of concrete and very successful. And then 
We also have some projects in your in vehicle testing center near Zhanghua in Taichung, Mid Taiwan. So use a certified and that also very successful. Successful. And the number four nuclear power plant, they also use a lot of uh, fried because a lot of my students uh, in Taiwan power plant, they use a mixed design of this one. And the porcelain concrete sewage pipe, I designed in year, about year 2000, and that is 35 MPA. And also Taizong, Taiwan power, middle, power plant, middle type. So that is also very successful. We use a fry ash, button ash to do, uh, to make a uh, construct, to make a road, paver road. So that it's a payment from the, uh, the I see sea structure, water structure, and anti seismic structure, high pumps concrete. So a high bridge from 35 to 56 MPA, high tumulus concrete. So in Taiwan steel, uh, Taiwan uh, China steel, all the railway steel I designed for them is 120 MPA. That is a very high strength, 17,000 uh, PSI. And I also designed for high integrity content of for nuclear waste, that from 70 to 100 MPA. And also designed for military 80 bumping structure is 120. MPA. And then some high quality structure, I use uh, uh, fire edge and button edge as set compacting concrete. They way we in center for art culture in Kaohsiung and the Langang Transportation Station. So that is a major project, but some other project I also did for, for the construction site. Okay, next please. So that is an example of what we are doing. And I also show some recipe, but this recipe already old. Now the for the cement, for the cement 387 uh, kg per cubic meter, I can produce 17,000 PSI concrete now because I can save about three quarter of uh, energy uh, CO2 emission. So that's uh, the result I show here. That is from 1983 to 1994. Next, please. And Museum of Aquarium, okay. Uh, Marine and Biology Aquarium, okay. So that is used uh, uh, 290 kilograms of cement. So that normally this kind of cement, they need uh, three, more than 300, uh, for 5,000 PSI concrete, need 500 kilograms spent. So you can see that this concrete only use uh, less than 50% of spent. Not only we use uh, to replace men, but we fuel the void of sand. So they can contribute major strength. So you look at the, from the roof, in this uh, middle of the right-hand side, you will see that uh, uh, the roof, also use uh, this kind of concrete. Okay, so in this concrete, we uh, specify the chloride penetration less than 1,000 kulum. That is very important for the durable concrete. Next, please. For type of one, one, you will see here, uh, look like uh, fresh is zero, but actually at the end product, we use a lot of fresh and some silica film. Silicon fraction actually the particle size is different, but it can be used. So that in year 1999 to 2000. Next, please. And Langan, so that also 4,000 PSI, concrete and 5,000 PSI. Next, please. And where we in is 4,000 to 5,000 PSI concrete. So that this building get the golden, uh, award from the, the government. Next, please. And for the high integrated content of our nuclear waste, you will see that we made this concrete, is a high strength, uh, is a 17,000 PSI strength. Use water about 120, it's very, very small amount of water because we try to reduce 
shrinkage. And we add a large amount of uh, 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 steel fiber. So the concrete look outside. So they put the, the waste into the container and cover with it. Then can we can put that for more than 300 years. Next, please. Well, the carbon core ash application for low work for energy saving and carbon reduction is very important, especially I think in the future in Indonesia, you can build the, the city, intercity uh, countryside, use all this material. And that could be quite useful. And that I, we already uh, promote this technology in mainland China. Next, please. And this one is in Taichung, in the Zhanghua, actually, for the edge pump. So we use a low, use this kind of a button edge of fresh. And that we use a, a control low strength material. And they save a lot of money, a lot of money. Next, please. So this high flowing fry ash and bottom ash control low strength material. In Taiwan now, we have a, a label with a green material because that save at least 50 to 60% of cement. So the concrete like this one, flowing like this one, can fill the switch pipe. And this is a very uh, common use in Taiwan. Next, please. So in uh, Taiwan power, we also uh, in year 2010 use uh, for the payment for the loan uh, around the power plant. So use a CLCM, CLCM, and we check the quality. Next please. Two days later, we use a, a roller uh, to roll the roll. And then the CSM, there's no crack anyway. So that's the service good. So for the tradition, we use a load. is a gravel aggregate put in there and the load actually will crap or some uh, problem because, uh, and, but use a CSM, you modify the land, the ground. So this, CSM just look like the soil, but it's better for soil. Next, please. And four days later, we'll pull second or third layer and traveling with the menu, leveling, or you can use a, a automatic machine to flow in the service. So that looks very well. And the result now, till now, year 2020, 22, still very good shape. Next, please. Well, ESG function of fry ash and button ash. I think for the circular economy, but very important to meet sustainable development goal from the United Nations. So we try to have a sustainable city in the 11, and we are responsible consumption and production travel, and also uh, the economic growth, the number eight, uh, economy, industry innovation number nine. So this one is we try to use a button edge and fries that can be useful. And that will have uh, good for the number three, good health and well being. Next, please. If we don't try to reduce CO2 emission, the greenhouse effect cause disaster. Another typhoon, monsoon, or fire on the forest and the forest drought all, all the war. I think now there are big problems. So we try to save energy, strap the, the earth, try to, we should use a lot of this uh, button ash and fresh to try to reduce cement usage. Next one. Next one, please. Next, please. Okay. Well, we know that one ton of cement will, will emit 0.85 tons of CO2, consume a lot of uh, 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 the electricity and fuel. Okay. Next, please. 
So this one, we try to use less cement, we can become the environment friendly material. So the fresh Bundle Edge provide a chance for us to use it. Next, please. So how to do and how to make the concrete durable without fresh and button edge. Actually, the building can last, can not last longer because I have a, a lot of experience doing slag. Only use slag, you have a problem, okay? Only use fresh and also a problem. So I usually combine these two together. And so these uh, fresh it become a kind of K shell, uh, KT kilo, uh, kilo shell from our body. So mm -hmm. this lime and puzzle that can uh, make the concrete sustainable. Next, please. So we pursue the high quality, the material is very important. So the fries, botanized material and process is important. So we not only need very good design of the recipe, but we also have a very good uh, process like a chef to process this again and then make concrete healthy and long life. Next, please. And durable and sustainable. If the cement passes the law, law more, the durable, durability will reduce. So we try to use a fries and uh, button edge to reduce the cement pest and increase the durability from the fresh stage to hardened stage. Next, please. Concrete with large amount of uh, uh, core edge. Then in Taiwan, we already deem as green concrete with 50% less cement based on the same strength and control low strength material with minimum cement for most back feeding job and low base project. Next, please. So this uh, show you some data uh, for some, some uh, uh, remarkable, remarkable project and see how many uh, CO2 reduction in the blue circle. You will see that actually it's have a lot of reduction of CO2. So for the circular uh, economy and for our future, this is very important. Next, please. So feature application of core ash and button ash, zero carbon emission. It's payment as for concrete low base subgrade, brick insulation brick, ordinary center of brick and slab tire, lightweight foam brick, lightweight aggregate agriculture, and also geopolymer. Next, please. Well, for the European community, the project we did, we use all kinds of waste, use the geopolymer as a binder, use a button edge or waste material as aggregate. So that can be an uh, example for uh, future application in Indonesia. We use a rubber tire, we use a geom foam, we use a, a plastic material, then use a, can be used as a aggregate. So that can be very, very full. Okay, next please. So we use a geopolymer to produce uh, the Saskon, September concrete, binder and the nature. Okay, next please. And this concrete actually flooring. Okay, so you will see that uh, the men, we use all the waste material. So we try to use uh, all waste, totally waste. So doing a design and testing of the Saskon concrete. Next please. So that's the plan we are doing. Uh, the European company, uh, they use uh, the company to produce help industry. So the project we finish, just then they deliver to the interest, industry. Next, please. So we do some test panel. Use, uh, you will see this one, you have to get shape, okay? So we can pr produce a brick and all other material. Next, please. So that's a brick. Okay, next. 
conclusionary remark. Okay. So in the future, we need a big data, a lot of data. So in the future, we can design concrete, use artificial intelligence and use IoT. So to in response of the 4G era, build all this operation information. So we can design and we can test. So we can establish complete GIS information system. It's establish a digitalization of flying spotting edge data bank. And we can calculate carbon uh, tax, okay, in the future. Next, please. So we will have a sustainable earth, energy saving, and carbon react reduction, just a steep job and Einstein use our imagination, create more uh, application case for the future. Okay, thank you for your attention. Next, please. And if there are any question, I can answer the question. Thank you very much for your okay. attention. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Huang. It's a very interesting uh, presentation and you shared a lot of uh, experience. It's very valuable for, for us. Uh, and it's really great honor here. We have Professor Huang for discussion. Uh, so I open the session for question. But first I will read the question. Uh, maybe this one is for Bu Chanwarti from Mr. Tanaka. Uh, fly ice contain the toxic heavy metal. How can we think about an effort to ecosystem by being leached out from this material? So that's the question that I read from uh, chat in the Zoom. So please, uh, maybe Buchanwari can address the question. Yes, thank you, Bukeli. I agree that uh, byproduct may contain a lot of uh, uh, minor minerals like heavy metals or some uh, yeah you know like uh, uh, constituents that may be uh, leak out to the environment but um, here uh, by doing the solidifications for example we uh, mix uh, flyers or bottom mass with cement uh, and also uh, mixing the collage with the alkali to make it solidify. So uh, during my experience in Indonesia or in Japan also, I don't, yeah, I've never seen any uh, reaching of uh, very dangerous material, for example, like um, chrome, or uh, we're also worried about the, uh, yeah, maybe zinc, or PB, or even boron. Boron uh, can be found uh, abundantly in the fly ash, and uh, it is easily uh, released to the water. For example, if, if we have fly ash and the piling of uh, fly ash is not uh, properly uh, placed in the yard or in a, a power plant, uh, we worried that the uh, boron can leak out and uh, penetrate to the uh, underground water. But here in Indonesia, we have a very uh, strict regulations. Uh, in uh, regulations, uh, we control also the constituent of uh, uh, yeah, uh, leaching of the fly ash to the environment. So a uh, long time ago, <laughs> before uh, last year, uh, we suffer uh, from these regulations because it is too much strict, the strictest ever. <laughs> so because of that, uh, you know, like uh, uh, fly ash and bottom ash uh, was considered as uh, heavy, uh, as the toxic material, hazardous material. And because of that, nobody wants to use that. Everybody's scared about the uh, regulations. So uh, the utilizations of the flyers be becomes very uh, difficult because of the regulations. But uh, fortunately, last year uh, in February, uh, we changed, I mean, the, 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 the government changed the regulations and flyers also bad them as 
uh, are delisted from the regulations from being a uh, uh, hazardous material to uh, byproduct material and also we uh, we conducted some exper uh, ex experiments uh, we call it ld15 uh, fd50 ld50 and we use the uh, bread mice uh, and we feed <laughs> uh, fly ash and and uh, to the to the mice and there is no problem so uh, it means that uh, uh, I cannot see I cannot say that uh, this material is safe <laughs> to as uh, uh, as we can uh, as we can touch uh, the sand or we can touch the soil but also we have to control uh, the safety because this material is very fine and like a dust uh, we have to uh, wear a proper uh, yeah, protection uh, during using the uh, flies, and we recount the flies just as the same as uh, we uh, we play with cement. So as a cement replacement, yeah, we consider flies as a binder. So it is safe, and uh, we, we we check also the constituent, the the leaching of the flies by using uh, uh, we call it uh, TCLP. Uh, this uh, it is a kind of a test for uh, toxic uh, toxic uh, leaching, and uh, all of the uh, result uh, below the maximum in the, in the standard. So I, I think that it is safe to use the uh, flyers in Indonesia, at least Indonesian flyers. But I don't know about the other flyers in other country. Uh, maybe I I found in some journals uh, that flyers in the uh, South Africa contain a lot of boron. And boron, actually boron is not a toxic material, but uh, it can, uh, yeah, it can uh, decrease the, uh, the harvest of, the, of some plantations. And it can also, uh, you know, um, bother some, uh, the growth of the, uh, the, the paddies. The rice, if we use it too much, but indeed in uh, Korea and also in China and some part of India, they use uh, flies and batamas as uh, a fertilizer or soil stabilization. And I think mm -hmm. for small amount is okay, but a large amount maybe is not uh, recommendable. Yes, thank Sit you. Down. Thank you, Bujanwardi. I think uh, Jenny already raised hand. Uh, before I go for, for the question in the chat, uh, I give the time for Jenny to deliver the question. Okay, thank you, Professor Felicia. Uh, actually, I would like to ask uh, Professor Huang yes. uh, response about the, uh, the case in Indonesia about the protection of coastline that Wu Janwarti has shown us. Uh, what do you think about that, Professor? Is there any uh, technology transfer from uh, Taiwan to Indonesia that we can do, Professor. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's a question. Yes, I think the question is uh, about uh, based on your experience, Professor Huang. Maybe you can uh, sharing how to uh, what is it uh, mitigate or to give a protection in the video that Pujanwati already showed you in the first uh, presentation. <laughs> Okay, it's, uh, I think the, the technical transport, actually in Taiwan, I transport to most of the uh, Taiwanese. And once uh, things, so if you want to try to use a button action flash successfully, actually they have some key, okay, to do this one. So in order to produce very stable and high quality fresh button edge concrete, you need 5M. 1M is a man. So you need a very good idea. I think in Indonesia, a lot of the uh, students from NTUSD and all over the world, they know how to use a fresh. So man is very important. Material, I think material is important. So I think that Mr. Tanaka-san asked about the, uh, some uh, toxic material. Actually in Taiwan, the top material, we already checked. No, those kind of heavy metal. So it's a 
we don't worry about it because in Taiwan, a lot of people worry about the material. So material is very important. So butter ash fresh, we check it. And also usually we will use uh, some slag. So some question ask me, mom, mama asked me this one is, uh, this material actually fresh we use to use a DMD method. So in, in the PowerPoint, okay, in the slide, you will see that we use a fresh to fill the void of an aggregate. So then aggregate, so material is very long, important. Recipe is very important. And the slag, we usually not fill the void of the sand. Okay, we've replaced 20 to 50% of cement. So they can further redu reduce a lot of cement. Okay, so that is a, a secret of the, this one. Okay, main material, machine. In order to produce very good concrete, the machine is very important because you use a small amount of cement. You might use a small amount of fresh or other extra uh, material inside that. How you can blend it very well? So I usually design a machine and that is a, a, some pattern, okay? We use a machine to blend it and then the concrete will be homogeneous. So for those uh, cementation material, well blended, homogeneous dispute is very important. And in that case, also you can put the steel fiber, uh, the PP fiber to increase the durability. So there's uh, so many different methods to do. So the machine is very important. The money, okay, you need to invest, have a good machine. Without a good machine, you can produce very good concrete. Okay, so in the machine I design, actually 80 seconds, you can produce one batch, continue pouring, okay, without uh, uh, some terminal, no, you just continue. And then mass storage. So I mentioned mass storage is another way to produce very good concrete is important is you put the water just like ASTM 109 or ASTM 190, the blended motor. So the methods are quite the same because it's according to the hydration of cement. So if you do this way, so 5M, then you can produce very good concrete. And sure, if uh, in about 10 years ago, I tried to introduce this one in Indonesia, but not successfully <laughs> because a lot, a lot of trouble, okay? But I think it's a time because at time, NDUSD and Indonesia tried to cooperate together and then can use a, a very, uh, I think the very familiar method to introduce in Indonesia. And then I, I can help to do this one. Yeah, because if you have uh, all this one, you can produce the concrete actually every day. It's uh, just like a 7-Eleven 7, 7 or McDonald's, still good. Not, not only very good enough, but it's good. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank that, you, Professor Huang. Yes, uh, you already answered the question for Jenny and also for uh, Buwarma. Yeah, another question in Indonesian, I will translate it into English. But I yeah. think I would like to add uh, your 5M becomes 6M. We need the master, Professor Huang, and you are the master <laughs> to run it. <laughs> so it should be 6M, not only 5M. <laughs> okay, <laughs> for the next question is... Uh, uh, is uh, fly ash and bottom ash is including in the hazardous uh, waste in Taiwan? Is it big, uh, hazardous waste in Taiwan? And regarding to the utilization uh, to fly ash and bottom ash uh, in Indonesia, because before, as Pujanua Bu said, last, just last year, government released uh, the uh, regulation that uh, 5S and bottom S is not hazardous uh, waste uh, anymore. So as just you said, Professor Huang, that it is the time to start it uh, in Indonesia. But uh, there is a question regarding to Taiwan. It is, is it hazardous waste and how is the change? Maybe you can share to us. Uh, yeah. I think before it's a hazardous waste, right? And then how it is yes. changed. Yes, yes. Well, it's a hurt. 
on me. Since uh, 1983, I read, I come back uh, to Taiwan from UIUC, Inino University. I try to convince people to use a price because it's a kind of waste. You should use a waste to pay money, okay? <laughs> you pay money to over the people to them uh, to treat it. But I spend eight to nine hours, nine year, eight to nine years, and do a lot of research work from 1983 to 1990. Okay, so I try to use all this material and prove the strength is good. So I, I get a lot of funds, a, a lot of grants from industry and from Taiwan Power. They provide money and they give me a lot of fresh and button -ish. I do it and I check it. the data is good. But people say, I know it's good, but I don't use it. <laughs> because they have a, a trouble of that. Uh, it's a kind of a hazard material and it's a waste. But I use a nine year, nine years I provide all the data and then until 1993. I come back from New Mexico University, I am a visiting professor. And then I use waste material, fry ash and uh, butter ash, and then use a silica uh, super precise with a slag. Then I first produce the high rise building. I use a high pumice concrete for 85 stores. So that is first example I use for concrete, make flooring and use a lot of uh, uh, fry ash. That is first case. And until that, I uh, provide, I give a lot of talk, at least five seminars to educate people, educate uh, government sector and uh, consultant. Let them know oh, this material is good. Without you that, you will have a problem. You, you, you will feel guilty if you don't use that. Until now, from 1994, fresh used. You will price fresh before is a one kilogram of fresh. You will give one or two dollars to treat it. But now one or two dollars, the price is quite similar with men. <laughs> They're quite similar. So without fresh, the concrete can be, cannot be flow and lasting two hours cannot be a high strength. Now I use a hundred, about 300 kilogram. I can produce 17,000 PSI concrete. Can you believe that? That's so that amazing. is the way, not the way I do. So I have trouble at the beginning eight years, but luckily I success to do that. But I retired. <laughs> But you are still the master professor. <laughs> so we really need your experience. Uh, no problem. Uh, yeah, no problem. Looking forward I to welcome you here. And the USD and uh, the bridge now is built up. So we can yes. use a high speed <laughs> yeah. to go through that. <laughs> and uh, the, in the question, uh, he, uh, he or she asking, oh, Baba Sutanto asking that, uh, is there any regulation in Taiwan to what is it the rule to what is it to use the fly S and bottom S? Is it any regulation in Taiwan? It's not really, no. Oh, not really. Okay. No. So because as long as you can use it, because I also give the people talk it just like a slide I provide. You use a flash not to replace man but you try to dense the structure. Yes, that's really uh, important and uh, useful uh, for the concrete. And I enjoy your presentation and also Bu Januardi. Uh, but because we have a very limited time for the next yes. presentation, uh, yes. we really thank you for Professor Huang and Bu Januardi time. Uh, we give applause with that. Oh, thank you <laughs> oh, for your attention. Another question, uh, Bu. Yanti asking Yanti. something, Bu. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, please, Bu, Bu Irianti. I'm sorry, Professor Wang. There is still another question. Professor please, Mama, Bu yeah. Irianti. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, thank you very much. You, you uh, hear my voice clearly? 
I'm yes, sorry? we hear you yeah, clearly. Okay. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Prof. Wang. It's a very yes. interesting uh, topic that uh, utilize the bottom as employees. Actually, I, uh, I'm Yanti and come from uh, Lambung Mangkurat University. It is it's southern part of Indonesia. Uh -huh. And uh, in here, we have a, a lot of uh, ways for the bottom as and also uh, oh. VS. So, my, uh, I think it's it's also collaboration for the chemical engineering, especially for the process, right? For produce the high quality of the material. So my question is, is, is that the material which you produce is applicable for the other countries, uh, especially in here? Because we have only two seasons in here and in Taiwan we have uh, four. So uh, it's already uh, have a qualifier for this one. So maybe because we have um, maybe the bottom us and also the flyers mm -hmm. is uh, the different composition. Okay, that is my question. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, the composition is quite similar because the fly ash and bottom ash is uh, the birth of the, the DNA of the birth of the fly ash bottom ash actually is a clay. Of course. So you don't worry about. In the world, actually, there are so many uh, international conferences organized by Mohatra, Professor Mohatra, he's retired. So we, he tried to give the people idea, this material is very useful, especially the Professor Meta from UC Berkeley. They use the idea use uh, the concrete can last in thousand years. So you build a temple in Hawaii. So you don't worry about that. The composition is quite similar. SiO2, AO203, and FeO203 about 75 to 80. That is all, that is clay. Because uh, you dig out the coal, you have a clay, of course. So you just, just dare to use it, no problem you will find this material a very unique and very useful material. Can give you a lot of uh, recycling economy. You will do that, okay? Is that the question? Yes. Answer? Okay, thank you. Well, so hope you successfully. Okay, hopefully, thank you. Okay. So thank you so much for Irianti for the question and thank you for Wang and Puchanwati once again okay. uh, for answering all the question and presentation. I return to Puwarma for the next presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Terima kasih. Bye. 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 Thank you very much, Professor. Wang and Ibu Januarti and also Ibu Feli for a very interesting discussion and talk today. And for the second session, I would like to uh, invite Ibu Dr. Jenny. Dr. Jenny, are you there? Ibu Jenny, do you have problems to sign? Jenny's loose connection. Okay. Yeah, uh, we wait for Ibu Jenny to come, but before that, I would like to invite General uh, Manager, Mr. Amos Chang. Yeah. Yeah. So, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Maybe already good afternoon here. So, yeah. And this uh, season, Dr. Jenny will be your uh, moderator. But uh, before that, I I will be may maybe take. Uh, 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 Hello, boy. Oh, okay, Jenny already in here. <laughs> yeah, oh, Dr. Jenny, much. time time is yours, so you can continue with the general manager, uh, um, Mr. Amos Chang. So okay, please. thank you, Boa. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Hello, Mr. Chang. Uh, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Jenny. I am the new lecturer in Widya Mandala, actually, but I'm in Taipei right now as the uh, invited uh, a visiting scholar, invited by Professor Liu. So yes, 
I would like to, uh, it's my pleasure and honor to be a moderator in the last presentation today. Uh, will be presented by Mr. Amos Cheng, Chang, okay? Mm -hmm. And he is a general manager in Chungtai Research Technology Corporation. And of course he has uh, a lot of experience and uh, he's an expert in the environmental and recycling uh, process uh, and he got his uh, master degree in Institute of Natural Research Management in National Taipei, Taipei Uni University. So without any further ado, uh, oh yeah, by the way, Miss, Mr. Amos Chang will bring his presentation in uh, Mandarin. I think we should use the interpretation option in the Zoom, okay? So without any further ado, uh, let's welcome uh, Mr. Chang to give the presentation. Please, Mr. Chang. How you you 接下来我跟各位介绍有关中台资源科技在废弃物资源回收上的解决方案。我会分以下两个部分来跟各位做介绍。第一个部分是有关我们中台资源科技的ESG，还有我们第二部分是我们中台在台湾有关资源回收方面
然后我们进一步进行的回收，在整个台湾的印刷电路板业的回收，废电路板的回收，我们占了百分之五十的这个占有率。那主要我们是核心的技术是用干式跟湿式的破碎制成，来把铜跟玻纤树脂做分离，然后再回用水来当媒介，然后进行全回收的制成。那回收铜跟那个玻纤树脂，产制成这个混凝土材料，用在营建工程上面。那我们服务的客户哦，就包括了机体电路、面板业、电路板，还有其他的相关电子产业。我们服务的客户哈，到目前哦，累计大概有三百三十家以上。那我们长期跟电子业的互动。那也是电子业绿色供应链的伙伴，所以相对我们在整个品质的管理跟 E S G 啊这个治安位的防安位的管理上面，我们就是从这个进料，任何废弃物进到我们厂里面，我们会先进行采样分析，然后符合我们可以处理的项目，我们才跟客户签订合约，签订合约以后才好、啊、这个清运进厂。清洁进场过程里面，我们还是会做抽样分析哈。那分析完以后再称重哦入库。那依照我们不同的处理程序，我们再进行领料啊，进行焚化或是固化哈等等的处理。那处理过程里面，我们不会产制相关的再生产品，进一步的做再生产品的检测，符合品质规定啊，再做进行销售。那处理过程里面也会有衍生的。废弃物，我们进行衍生废弃物的啊妥善的处理。那因为废弃物的种类项目很多，所以我们内部有设置哈，大概两百平六间的检测实验室，最主要针对焚化的部分进行相关散火点啊、热值啊、三成分等等流率含量的检测分析，了解物质的状况，拿在。交给后段哈做相关的参配，然后再进行处理。然后固化的部分，我们包括两个部分，一个是那个飞灰哈有 fly ash 的有害飞灰的，我们是进行固化的处理。那固化完以后，我们会进行毒性溶出跟抗压强度的测试。那在 button ash 上面，我们是做资源化，做成 CSM 跟这个再生力量。那进行相关流率含量、抗压强度的，还有这个环境相容性的这个检测，那再进行销售。那另外还有化学洗净，也有相关的检测分析。那除了物料分析以外，我们也进行环境分析，还有哦员工作业的哦相关的检测分析。那我们厂里面设置的相关的哈检测的仪器，哦包括了这个。热值啦、啊、重金属啦、啊，好、哦、等等的这个设备的分析。那值得一提的就是，我们中台除了做废弃物的资源化回收处理以外，我们在三个厂都有设置环境教育的场域，然后把我们整个做处理的相关的技术，还有环境保护、资源回收的理念，好、哦、贯彻在这个教育训练里面，然后开放给这个。政府机关、学术单位、民间，还有国际，好、啊、进行相关的交流。我们从两千零八年设立环境交易场域，一直到去年哈、啊，累计参访的人数大概接近哈八千九百二十一人。那刚才提到，我们三个厂就是第一个就是我们三厂做废印刷电路板的回收处理，我们从。2015年成立到去年哈，七年里面我们一共回处理的台湾大概有八万七千哦七百多公吨的这个废印刷电路板，那从里面破碎分选出铜哈，有两万五千多吨的，也就是所谓的城市采矿，因为台湾不产铜，可是我们从这个电路板业里面去把铜哦分离出来。那相对就是我们从这个日本的铜壳金属，它做这个碳足迹的盘查里面，我们可以了解，就是
原生的铜跟再生的铜哈、哦，跟城市采矿的铜，它的碳排放量大概差了十倍。那我们间接哈、哦、可以减少二氧化碳排放量，大概是啊一万一千多吨。那另外我们这个二厂最主要是做含汞灯管的回收，我们从两千零二年哈、哦、一直回收到去年。总共回收的哈废灯管的量大概达到四万五千哦七百公吨左右，那从里面哈回收的大概有八点二吨的这个汞，那减少这个汞的汞物原物料的使用，那也减少这个环境的危害。那另外在这个环境教育上面哈，大概参访的大概有八千九百多人。那以上是我们整个中台资源哈，整个营运 ESG 的一个策略跟目前的绩效。那接下来主要跟各位介绍有关我们中台在废弃物资源化上面的一个解决方案。我们中台的整个理念哈，就是把废弃物摆对位置，让它能够尽量的原料化、资源化。那不能原料化、资源化，就进行热能的回收。那目前我们一共设置的有三个厂，那接受台湾有关电子业、半导体哈、哦、等等这个电子产业，还有化工业，那甚至医疗，因为现在 COVID-19 的疫情，所以相对有很多防御旅馆，这个医疗废弃物量哈、哦、在台湾大概增加了四倍。那我们新设的中台一厂也协助哈、哦、台湾政府哦去去化这些。哦，这个防疫医疗的这些废弃物的处理，那另外住商的照明灯管的回收，那经过我们三厂把这些废弃物处理完以后，然后会哦产制相关的哦这个贵金属或是玻璃或是哦电力，然后再回到这个相关的台湾的产业上面，这是我们整个中台资源营运的哈这个循环蝴蝶图。那细部的介绍有关我们中台一厂这个焚化发电厂，我们设置的焚化发电厂主要是处理哈、哦、台湾事业废弃物，也就是因为电子业在台湾设置哈、哦，就是这几年来这个投资设厂扩厂的很多。那我们设置这个厂主力就是要服务台湾的电子业，因为电子业本身产出的废弃物哈、哦、种类形式非常多元，有。这个混合的溶剂类的酸碱的，然后另外还有很多固形的固体的废弃物。那我们是设置哈、哦、有固体的焚化线跟液体的焚化线。那固体的焚化制成，我们基本上考虑到，因为世界废弃物里面哈、哦，除了固态里面，它还有粘稠、哦胶状的。那这些在焚化过程里面是比较容易交结哈、哦，这个会在炉体里面。形成哦结结结构，然后损害这个运行焚化的运行，所以我们在固体的焚化设置上面，我们是用短旋窑，也就是直径五米、长度八米的这个短旋窑，然后再连接哈后面的机械炉床，两段式的焚化来处理这个台湾事业废弃物多元的这个废弃物的问题。那因为焚化的过程里面哈，一般呢、啊、就是废弃物的这个含氯硫的含量还有热值是不一，所以我们经过这个前段的调配以后，再进到我们的这个入料口，然后再进到我们的短旋窑跟机械炉床去做焚化。那焚化过程里面就是我们一般呢、啊、哈，这个废弃物的焚化就是一百吨的废弃物进来焚烧。大概有哈、哦、这个产生百分之哦十五，也就是十十五吨的这个底渣 b u t t o n ash）。那另外就是有百分之五哈的飞灰，飞灰来自于哈、哦、锅炉灰跟这个 b a c k h o u s e 的反应灰。好、哦，这刚才黄教授已经都提到了哈、哦。那因为整个焚化过程里面，刚才提到就是百分之五的。百分之五的飞灰，百分之十五的底渣，那意思就是说，还有百分之二十的这个固体物都被烧成哈气体、气态。
那相对气态里面的污染物的成分特性就很多。那我们主要的重点哈，就是除了稳定、安全、稳定的燃烧，把这些废气无害化以外，很重要的就是要很好的这个空污防治系统。我们设置的就是第一段哈，这个是二次燃烧室，最主要焚化过程里面有一些非化性的有机气体。经过我们二次燃烧时，让温度提升到一千度，停留时间两秒，把这些 VOC 哈有害气体把它焚化破坏，破坏完以后哈，接下来就是要除 NOx，NOx NOx 是很重要的去除的重点。那我们是先哈，因为经过这个入口以后，这里温度大概在九百五到一千零五十度左右。那我们在这里喷氨水，就是第一段的 SNC 啊，好，那去除完以后，这个烟气哈、啊，经过锅炉来回收它的热能，那形成这个水蒸气，那再推动涡轮机发电。那电力我们有三分之二自用，然后三分之一卖给这个电力公司。那这里。的过程里面，我们就是也让它实现热能回收发电的这个效果。那经过这个锅炉回收热能以后，对这个烟气再进到哈第二道的 S C 啊，选择性触媒在第二道的哈把这个 NOx 把它还原成氮气跟水。那去除 NOx 完以后。在进行哈这个这个困曲，半干式洗涤塔，最主要是用这个这个液碱，让这个来除这个 HCl 跟跟 SARS 哦这种酸气，那主要是也有降温的效果。那降温完以后，再进行 back house。back house 我们有特别哈，就是。在管线里面，我们喷注的活性炭跟这个小苏打，在这个喷完以后，这些活性炭跟小苏打就会附着在这个 bug house 的这个滤布上面。那最主要是要去除哈、啊、酸气，还有重金属，还有带凹性。那去除完以后，我们再接续在第二道哈、啊、用 wet scrubber 再除酸。那除酸完以后。我们哈在热回收交换，然后把温度提升到120度左右，让整个烟囱排放的气体不会有白烟现象，就是全部都是好洁净化。那也设的24小时连续监测系统，好来控管控我们这个排放烟气的这个情况，稳定符合这个排放标准。那这是我们整个设置的一个流程。那目前我们。资源就是台湾政府的这个哦，疫情的这个相关的医疗废弃物的处理以外，另外就是像台积电哈、哦，有一些保密性的这个报废的晶片，也都是经过我们的处理。那另外一体炉的部分哦，刚才提过，最主要就是我们处理这个没办法回收的废溶剂，因为它是混合的废溶剂，那我们是用喷注式的焚化炉。来来做焚化，然后后段的这个锅炉啦、空污系统哈、哦、是一样的。那这是我们中台一厂的设置。目前我们固体炉一天的处理量可以达到100吨，液体炉的话一天可以处理80吨。那目前我们整个资源化的情况，最主要就是这个锅炉灰跟这个反应灰这两个飞灰哈。哦目前我们还是采用传统的，就是加水泥固那个螯合剂，让它成成固化体，无害化以后再做最终的掩埋。那目前我们也朝这个整个全循环的路线走哈，我们现在也开始着手哈，像刚才黄教授提到的相关资源化的方向以外，我们也考虑到用飞灰水洗无害化，还有。灰灰熔融无害化的相关的技术的研讨，那另外就是有关烟囱的二氧化碳的排放。
我们也考虑到，就是做二氧化碳的碳捕捉啊，在利用 CCUS 的相关的技术的探讨。那再来介绍到我们中台二厂，这个是我们成立二十年哈，在台湾有关这个废灯管的回收上面，我们目前哈在台湾占比大概是八成。那我们从相关的清运回收业，哈，回收回来的灯管，我们会进行分类，因为灯管有直管啊、环管各式各式类型的，我们需要做相关的分类，然后再进行破碎。啊，因为灯管里面含有汞的成分，所以我们制成最主要就是全部在负压的情况下，用热托负的处理模式，就是温度让它控制在这个600度，让汞能够。蒸发，蒸发冷凝下来以后，我们再做收集。那冷凝下来的时候，都是比较属于出汞。那我们再进行哦精炼，让它纯度可以达到四个九的纯度，然后可以再再利用。那这是我们整个废灯管的回收处理流程。那因为废灯管，韩汞的荧光灯管哈，慢慢被 LED 取代掉。所以我们相关的转型哈，我们也新设的这个热裂解制程，最主要考虑到就是因为我们发觉日本在有关废电子物品的回收技术上面哈都非常的先进，而且他们也考虑到到哈各国去富集有关这个贵金属，那所以台湾很多的这个电子废料含有复合金属的，好基本上都是哈。运到日本或是中国去做处理，那我们在台湾就新设的这个焚化制程，最主要是把含贵金属的复合材料，进一步的把它碳化，让这个贵金属能够哈裸露出来，然后再进一步哈做金属的回收，然后让这个贵金属能够哈哎留在台湾。那目前我们做热裂解也跟。这个相关台湾的贵金属的厂商，好做合作模式，拿来处理这一块的这个项目。那另外就是有关这个废印刷电路板，废印印刷电路板，我们主要是哈，因为一般印刷电路板哈，一块的尺寸大概都是五十公分见方。那我们经过这个干式破碎，把它破碎到大概两 m m p m 以下。然后再湿湿破碎，然后我们是应用水水摇床的方式，用重力分选，把铜跟玻纤树脂做妥善的分离。铜的话可以哈、哦、变成铜粉，然后玻纤树脂我们进一步改质，让它变成混凝土材料，然、哦、后供这个工程土木可以使用。那达到水的话，就是在整个运输上面都可以全循环。好、哦，这是我们的整个。运作的模式。那最后提到哈，就是刚才是我们中台资源主要是做回收哈，那我们也跟台湾很大的这个废弃物的掩埋哈，固化掩埋场可林位哦做策略联盟。我们除了这个处理端以外，我们延伸到前面哈，有做这个废弃物煤核的平台。也就是把台湾相关产业产生的废弃物的厂商，还有台湾清运业者、回收业者，都纳到这个平台里面来，然后在有关废弃物的需求清运处理上面做一个媒合的机制。那媒合过程里面，我们有自己的清运的车队，到相关的产研机构哦做废弃物的清运回收，然后回收的话。就进到我们中台资源做相关的回收，然后要焚化处理的话，到焚化处理厂，焚化完以后，相关衍生的废弃物需要固化、好掩埋，形成一个哈一条龙哈上中下游的资源循环，全这个全方位的一个解决的一个模式的流程。那我大概快速的哈介绍到有关我们中台资源的整个处理解决方案。那也非常欢迎哈，各位，假如说有机会到台湾来的话，也欢迎大家哈，可以到我们工厂哦，实地来参访哦，指导哦。以上快速的介绍，谢谢各位
Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chang. So yeah, we go to the Q and A session. Okay, and I have found uh, many questions already about uh, Mr. Chang's presentation. So uh, first is from Mr. Sustanto Kusumo. Okay, uh, how to separate the electronic waste in Taiwan, and is there any regulation that? Uh, that obligate the sorry i okay that obligate the citizen uh for the separation yes please mr chang uh, i think michael should uh, interpret to chinese maybe Or perhaps I can do the translation. Oh, please, Professor Liu. Thank you. 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 Thank 因为台湾的废弃物的分类回收，除了我们传统的哈，就是像废纸啦、塑胶啦、纸类，这一般在整个整个那个民生上面都会做妥善的回收，因为它是有价的。那另外考虑到就是环境没办法负荷的，例如就是它含有危害物质，还是对环境长期不易腐化的，哦，然后没有回收效益的。那这个政府就要来来做统筹管理，例如我刚才提到的这个韩拱的废灯管，因为它本身就是含有有害物质，那变成台湾就会成立一个所所谓的因回收制度，让延伸生产者责任，从这个产制灯管或是代理灯管的这些厂商要收回收清除处理基金，那我们这个厂。主要就是协助处理完以后，回收清除处理基金，依照我们处理的数量，然后来做分配。然后前段分给我们处理，也分给前段哈、哦、清运回收的业界。嗯、j e n n y should I do the translation or it will be translated into Bahasa? I am not sure. Translated to Bahasa. Uh, so maybe Jenny just translated in English and then Professor Liu translated to uh, Chinese and then the answer from, from Prof. Uh, Mr. Chang will be translated to Indonesian directly. Oh, okay. Uh, Professor Feli, so I can just continue to another question, right? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you for the answer, Mr. Chang. So another question is from Yam Tana. From Yogyakarta. So uh, the question is how to treat the hazardous waste of uh, and the electronic waste and another waste as uh, completely. But I think uh, the question, the answer is has been shown by uh, Mr. Chang in slide 17, if I'm not correct, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah. Maybe Mr. Chang can explain it more. Please, Mr. Chang. 对，张张总经理，呃，这位印尼，呃，他们在加加马达这个院的教授呢，他想了解的是说，我们在电子废弃物呢，怎么样子做呃有效的分离啊？虽然说主持人说，其实你的投影片已经讲得很清楚，但是也许你可以在电子废弃物的回收呢，啊，再稍微再琢磨一下。谢谢你。好，好。有关电子废弃物哈，我们大概可以分成两种哈，一种就是因为台湾电子电子产业很多，所以电子就是像做电路板的，印刷电路板业，它就会有废板编料，那这一类的就是它含有铜、玻纤、树脂等等。那另外一类就是，呃，电子产品汰换出来的，例如我们的家电资讯产品，那这两两类哈。在台湾，它是这样，就是，诶、欸，生产制造业衍生的废弃物，就
由事业哈来做相关的回收。那回收包括就是台湾有两个部分一个就是做粉碎破碎完以后，再由后面有关精炼厂它回收这个诶贵金属，例如金银八宝哦这一类的系统。那另外一类就是因回收，就是这个废家电，还有这个废资讯物品，它经过拆解。破碎完以后，会分离出一些电路板。那电路板里面有一些电子零组件。那在台湾哈，在处理这一块技术还没发展的很完整，所以基本上都是由日本哈来接收这一块做后端的处理。那这也是台湾目前哈所有的产业在做整合。例如我刚才介绍的，我们的热裂解，我们就跟金一鼎。贵金属合作，那我们在台湾就可以把这一块把它处理掉，哦，不需要日本，哦，就是运到日本去做处理。我们希望就是台湾慢慢的去做这一方面资源化的连接，好，让我们的资源化的这个高值化，哦，能够往前迈进。OK， 呃、uh, ，I see b u j a n w a r t i raise the hand， so yes， please b u j a n w a r t i Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, it's very interesting to, to see your presentations. Uh, and I just remember that uh, maybe um, six or seven years ago, I visited Tai Heo Cement in Japan. As you know, that uh, uh, they are doing uh, almost the same things. Uh, they get the waste from the municipal city, from the Uh, Tokyo government, and also uh, they separate uh, some materials like uh, you have done, and uh, they found out that uh, of course some materials is useful to make a cement, and they uh, have yeah come up with the idea to make a cement, and they produce eco cement. So this is the first uh, cement in the world uh, made from the Uh, with uh, municipal city. And my question is, are you going to do the same things? Maybe because it's quite uh, interesting and uh, talking about money, it's a quite big money to make a cement industry from uh, the waste. Thank you very much. Maybe I can answer the question. I don't think Zhongtai is involved in uh, making cement. I see. It's more like upstream uh, treating and try to uh, uh, extract the usable, valuable resources from waste, particularly from uh, the high value added e waste. Uh, let me do the translation. Zhang Zhong Jili, this way, Indian ITS Dejian University's professor, he wants to ask the question is that he visited seven years ago in Japan. He has also studied in Japan. He has also 日本有一些啊，这些焚化炉的处理呢，就是呃，除了处理之外呢，呃，也会做成比较绿色的或者是呃生态的、呃、水泥啊。他不知道说，他想了解说，中台公司呢是不是有这方面的打算？然后呢，呃，比较呃，比如说利润啊，或者是附加的价值这方面呢、呃，想了解一下公司的这个掌握是什么样子。麻烦你，谢谢。好好，这是一个很好的问题哈、哦。刚才提到，就是我们整个焚化过程里面，最主要就是这个焚化完以后的这个底渣，那另外就是锅炉灰跟这个反应灰。那针对底渣，底渣本身是无害化的物质。那在我们厂里面，我们会经过破碎，让它破碎到粒径大概在1 9 m m 以下。然后再经过涡电流、磁旋涡电流，把铁跟铝这些物质把它去除掉，然后再进一步变成这个底渣。那底渣过程里面，我们做出来有两种产品，一种是 CSM， 那另外一种就是再生力量。那做的过程里面，我们因为过程里面要加水泥，水泥就是成本。那做出来的 CSM 跟再生力量。这个对外到这个营建工程变成我们要跟这个
混凝土厂哈、哦、做合作，那基本上我们的量很少，跟他们占比差太大了，他可以不用我们，所以目前我们变成就是，诶，没有主导权，所以相对要靠他们。靠他们的话，他就是哈会压低价格，甚至我们要补补贴他清运费用。所以说实在的，就是我我们这一块几乎没办法赚钱。目前是这个情况。嗯。Hello, Professor. Uh, sorry that if it's possible. Professor Liu can uh, translate a little bit in English because uh, uh, the uh, some of the terminology maybe we don't understand because uh, mostly using this like uh, chemical and construction part. Very sorry, Professor. <laughs> uh, no, no problem. Uh, yeah. Uh, GM Zhang uh, says that this is a very interesting question. Uh, actually, they do uh, reuse the butter mesh in the incinerator. Uh, to make eco cement, however, the quantity is so little that they do the collaboration with Japanese company. However, uh, the market is so limited, and the value is also very uh, meager. So uh, it's not profit making. Yes, I see. Thank you very much, Professor Liu. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Chang, thank you very much. Thank you, I really want to visit. I really want to visit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never been to Taiwan. I mean, like uh, just a transit uh, during my flight from Indonesia to Japan. So yeah, I've never uh, visited uh, properly <laughs> Taiwan, Taiwan to enjoy uh Taipei and also the university. Maybe next next time I can visit. Yeah, you. definitely. Uh, we can visit uh, uh, Zhongtai Resource Corporation because the company is so close to uh, Taoyuan International Airport. I think I it's see. like you're talking about ten minutes by car. And uh, when we visited uh, Zhongtai, as hosted by GM Zhang, actually everyone, all professors, were very much impressed. Yeah. It's it's a it's a more like a model company uh, when mm -hmm. it comes to circular economy. Okay. Yeah, you you definitely uh, if genuity will be invited uh, as soon as possible. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is there any more uh, time, Wawa, so that we can continue the another for another question? Yeah, we still have some question because uh, the time is uh, still uh, uh, ongoing, Jenny. It's okay. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, I found the interesting question also from Iman, Imam Tegu. Okay, so uh, is the recycling uh, process in Taiwan is uh, done by the private uh, company or the the government okay and another question is how how is the how about the cost is it done uh, is it uh, is it supplied by the government or uh, the the company itself okay yeah that's the question professor 哎，张总经理，呃，两个很有趣的问题哈，印尼的朋友想要了解说。你这些废弃物的回收，工业废弃物的回收呢，是呃民间部门在做呢，或者是公部门在做？这是第一个问题。那第二个呢是说，呃，例如说中台科技在回收这些废弃物的时候呢，那这个呃主要的这个钱啊、呃、是是哪里来的？是呃污染物的生产者出的呢？啊、呃，或者是消费者啊、呃，或者是政府？住啊，就是整个这个价格，或者是整个呃金钱流跟物资流的问题啊，麻烦你回答，谢谢。好，好，首先针对那个回收哈、哦，回收因为在台湾，因为走私基本上哈、哦，政府定游戏规则，法令规定。
然后后民间哈、哦、走自由竞争市场，所以资源回收都是从民间民间来做。可是政府就是因为涉及到，因为废弃物资源化回收跟处理还有废弃哈、哦、是一体两面，所以。在法令里面有规定，就是要有资质，就是你要做资源回收或处理，你要取得证照。好、哦，有这样的规定。那第二个就是费用的部分，哈、哦，台湾是采用哈、哦、污染者付费原则，也就是事业你产出的废弃物，那就事业要出钱。那焚化处理的费用多少，那政府不去定这个价格，就是由这个。产生废弃物的事业跟处理端哈，两个来议和这个价钱。那目前就是因为要看整个市场的处理容量哈。以目前台湾呢、啊，台湾的焚化炉其实只有哈，处理事业废弃物的焚化炉只有四座，我们中台是第四座，啊，唯一有发电的也就是我们中台。那我们处理的费用目前呢哈。一吨的处理费用，事业废弃物一吨处理费用是两万块台币以上，跟一般的都市焚化炉哈，处理民间的垃圾一吨是两千三，所以是有很大差别。因为两千三的焚化炉是政府新建，然后民间代操作，所以相对费用会比较低。那像我们这种烧事业废弃物是民间投资、民间营运，所以相对成本就会比较高。对，以上。OK， OK， maybe Professor Liu could you, yeah, help us to translate the answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it, it's a very uh, interesting question, uh, mainly uh, for industrial waste treatment and disposal, as well as recycling and reuse. Okay, uh, mainly it's done by private sectors on competitive uh, basis. So it's like private sectors they bid uh, for the project uh, to handle uh, all industrial waste. Treatment, disposal, and recycling and reuse. Okay, so uh, roughly speaking, uh, in treating industrial waste uh, by the Zhongtai uh, uh, Resource Corporation, uh, the cost is about twenty thousand NT per metric ton, okay, which is about seven hundred US dollars per metric ton. And uh, one important thing is. Uh, for private companies uh, in involved in this business, uh, it has to be certified by Taiwan EPA first. So total, there are only four companies in Taiwan, uh, certified companies in Taiwan uh, in this business. However, only Zhongtai uh, out of the uh, total of four companies uh, are involved in producing electricity uh, from industrial waste. In the process. Wow, Chongtai Technology Company is very cool. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let's go to another question. Uh, the first from Trio Tegu Putra. Okay. First is how to ensure that uh, the Chongtai company has the good safety for the employee and also for the environment and what is the standard that they use. Okay. And the second is uh, from the process, uh, we can see that, uh, uh, can, we, can you explain more that uh, how to reduce the gas emission that uh, discharge to the environment and how to ensure that it is uh, Good to discharge or not uh, hazard for the environment. Okay, that's. 好，哎，张总经理，呃，有两个问题。第一个问题是说，呃，有印尼的朋友想要了解说，中台公司呢
怎么样子呃确保对环境的保全，还有对呃受雇员工的健康啊、呃、安全的这个保障。第二个问题是说，在焚化啊或者是在其他的这个处理的过程呢，怎么样子确保呃废气它的排放呢，对于大气环境呢呃是没有不利的影响。谢谢。我这个是非常好的问题哈。其实我们我们中台本身，我们也也在推行 ESG。我们在今预计今年七月底，我们会发行我们第一本的 ESG。那主要就是因为发行过程里面，我们内部有建 ISO 哈，治安卫管理系统 ISO 45001。由制度化来保障哈、啊、员工的健康，因为员工是我们的宝贝，所以相对我们以安全哈、啊、为第一要务。所以，我们员工整个操作过程里面，我们都有相关的防护衣、防护设备，好，这是必备的。那另外就是有关环境确保的部分，因为我们焚化过程里面，我刚才提到，就是烧的话。固体烧完以后，大概百分之八十都是气体。那我们在这一块里面，我们有很好的防治设备，好多段的污染防治设备，然后还有这个二十四小时连续监监控系统，可以从后端哈的状况来控制前端，做前端的调整。那这是我们最重要的一个一个项目。那另外在环境保护的部分。我们底渣啦、飞灰哈，这些我们也进一步要把它做资源循环。那我们目前哈，就是因为目我们希望就是持续的哈，能够做到哈零排放，所以在飞灰的无害化部分跟烟囱的碳捕捉，我们持续的哈在做相关的研讨，希望能够哈未来预计哈也挑战二零三零年哈。净零碳排的这个目标。Okay, uh, this is the answer from uh, GM uh, Zhang uh, regarding the protection of the environment and uh, the safety of employee. Uh, Zhongtai Corporation uh, actually values uh, ESG, environment, sustainability, and governance. Uh, actually, the company is going to. Uh, release the first uh, ESG uh, report, the CSR, uh, in this year. So the company basically adopts ISO 45001 uh, okay, system. Okay, so the approach is to use systematic approach okay, uh, to protect the environment as well as the employees who are the precious assets of the company. Okay. And the second is regarding the air pollution control devices uh, following the incinerator and uh, pyro pyrolysis uh, reactor. Uh, you find scrubber, you find back house, uh, EP, uh, so that uh, NUX, socks in particular metals are all uh, effectively removed. And actually the company also set up as required by the government a 24 hour continuous emission monitoring system, okay? So the uh, gas pollutants control uh, is in good condition. Moreover, uh, the company is looking into uh, better or value added uh, reuse of button ash and fly ash. In the meantime, uh, the company is studying the control of carbon dioxide uh, in the uh, stack, okay? So that to meet the 2030 uh, zero emission target. Okay. Yeah, this is the answer. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chang and Professor Liu. So uh, maybe this is the last question about the regulation in recycle recovery of waste. Okay, uh, how about uh, how about the application of the ban and fine and the sanction regulation in Taiwan. 对，张总经理，那印尼的朋友想要了解说，台湾在这些工业废弃物的呃回收或者是处理呢，呃，它的一些法则大概是怎么样？比如说违法，那它是不是会被罚款
是不是会被停工啊、呃？是不是会有一些呃刑事的责任？他们想了解说法规方面的怎么样子在做规范？好。<咳>因为废弃物的处理法规哈，法规是非常重要的。那台湾就是因为处虽然有有很多的处理单位，可是难免还是会有违法哈、乱道的行为。所以台湾的法令在去年哈有修订，就是这个延伸哈这个产业事业的责任，就是产业事业哈，它它不是单单把废弃物委托给别人处理就就不用理的，它要。应有应尽的责任，他要去追踪，就是废弃物委托哈。假设他委托给我们中台资源，那他要定期到我们中台资源来看，看我们有没有妥善处理，那做成记录。好，用这样的追踪，就是，诶，产研跟处理端哈，彼此之间的相关的互动，要有这些的资讯佐证。好。It's a very good question, according to uh, Mr. Zhang. Okay, when it comes to industrial waste treatment and disposal, laws and regulations are very important. However, uh, even in the presence of very stringent regulation and fine, okay, still you find inappropriate treatment and disposal uh, in Taiwan okay, uh, now and then. That's why starting from last year, Laws and regulations in Taiwan are uh, amended uh, to emphasize the EPR extended producers' responsibility. So, for example, uh, TSMC, the world's leading semiconductor company, uh, ask uh, on lease uh, Zhongtai to treat the waste uh, produced in uh, TSMC. Still, uh, TSMC will be held. Responsible uh, to uh, to trace and to ensure that the waste okay uh, will be uh, will be treated nicely uh, and, and 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 no uh, breakup of the laws or regulation okay so uh, the producer's responsibility is to carry out routine checkup and to make. Uh, records uh, report to the EPA so that uh, just to make the uh, proper treatment and disposal uh, more uh, reasonable and more uh, practical. That's the answer from Mr. Zhang. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Liu and also Mr. Chang. So I think all the questions uh, have been answered. So Thank you very much once again, uh, Mr. Chang, for the very nice presentation and uh, so many uh, new information about the regulation and also the treatment process of the waste in Taiwan. Okay, so I will give it back to the host, Buwawa. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jenny. Thank you, uh, Mr. Amo Chang, and also Professor thank Liu. Thank you very much for the explanation, but before I close, maybe I would like to talk in Bahasa a little bit about what Professor already mentioned because uh, some of terminology maybe also is not very familiar to our interpreter. So, Bapak dan Ibu, mungkin yang dari DLH dan juga dari uh, pemerhati lingkungan, bahwa tadi yang sudah disampaikan berkaitan dengan uh, proses yang uh, terjadi di apa namanya uh, recycling company ini adalah mereka menerima berbagai uh, limbah dari uh, berbagai sumber. Kemudian tadi ada beberapa proses mungkin yang menarik untuk Bapak dan Ibu sekalian adalah proses yang tadi dijelaskan ada dengan insentrasi, kemudian ada dengan pirolisis, terus kemudian juga ada beberapa proses tadi tentang e-waste uh, recycling. Ini yang sedang banyak kita bahas juga dan tadi sudah disampaikan bahwa kalau untuk mengontrol dari polusinya, mereka menggunakan ada scrubber, kemudian ada elektrik, elektrik, elektrostatik precipitator, itu yang mereka gunakan, kemudian baku mutunya juga ada, dan mereka semua menerapkan uh, extended production responsibility. Jadi itu mungkin yang harus kita mulai uh, kerjakan di Indonesia, karena sebetulnya aturannya sudah ada, hanya saja 
Extended Production Responsibility di Indonesia itu akan baru diterapkan nanti pada tahun 2030, walaupun peraturannya sudah keluar di tahun 2019 kemarin. Mungkin itu yang bisa kami sampaikan. So thank you very much for all of the distinguished uh, speaker and also distinguished professor. So, uh, it's a very fruitful uh, discussion. And before we close our uh, webinar, we would like to take a pictures together. So please, uh, all of the participant, maybe you can turn on your uh, video. Yeah, we have 90 of the participants so five slides i think if but dewi you already you already uh start to take the pictures but dewi uh, yeah yes i will yeah you can count from count. the first slide until the last slide okay uh, yes okay uh, for the first page uh, one two three and then the second page and for the last page. Okay, thank you very much, Mbak Dewi. Pak Rektor, thank you for uh, attending this uh, activity until the end. So thank hope that idea. can see <laughs> Pak Rektor again in everyone. the future. Thank you thank very you much for everyone. coming. And Mr. Amos Chang, Professor Liu, and all. So this is the end of our meeting today. So we can still in the Zoom, but of course the activity informally is already finished. So thank you very much again, and hope that we can meet in another occasion, especially for transfer knowledge from Taiwan to Indonesia, and also the collaboration for the next future. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Mr. Chang. <laughs> thank you. you very much. Thank you, Pak. Mbak Yanti in here. Mbak Yanti, are you still there? <laughs> Mbak Yanti. <laughs> and also some friend, I think. Pak Weli is also in, in Tainan, Professor Liu. Oh, yeah? Ah. Yes, already <laughs> take for the doctor degree there. <laughs> So Pavelli should come visit me, okay? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in National Chen Kong? Yes, in National Chen Kong, oh, under see, Professor Lin. Uh, Lin Cai Fu. Yes, Sir, uh, oh. Sir Fu Lin. Yeah. <laughs>